All right, so the B sensor's on and flashing, and we're going to pair it with the app. So we're connected, and for this example, I've set it to box jump. And to wear the B sensor for a box jump, you need to place the B sensor on your hip. So we just tap to start. It gives me a five second countdown, and then I'm going to jump. Okay, so once you hit stop after you've done your reps, the timer automatically starts, which is a nice feature. Um, the downside, however, is that it measures impact on the box and also when you step or jump down off the box. So I only did six reps, but it counts a lot. What that means is it's going to pull our average power output down by averaging the lower impact of stepping down or the lower speed of stepping down. So luckily they've added the ability to go in and edit your reps. So you go in and you see your jumps. You can see when I was setting up all the little bumbling around. And then so I can select one of these lower ones, which clearly was not a box jump, and I can just come over here and delete this item. And I can go through. So one thing we noticed today in the gym is that you really have to pay attention to whether it was measuring an actual rep or the bar or the weights banging on the ground of the rack. Obviously for these sensors to be accurate, they have to be very sensitive. Um, the only downside for us as performance coaches is that we have to go in and rule out any movements that were not part of the actual lift. But here you can see it's giving me my speed, my average and my peak speed, my average and my peak power output and my strength. Okay, so I've set a new exercise. Um, I don't have the bar out right now, so I'm just going to do a dumbbell high pull at 50 pounds and we'll see what happens. So with the dumbbell high pulls, it measured the deceleration phase. So we've got to go in and delete those reps. Once you've got your actual reps, you can see here 1.77, 1.82, 1.8, 1.84, 1.8. You can see the velocity. And what's interesting in the whole purpose of velocity-based training is that my last rep here, it significantly drops off in the velocity. So depending on what my training goals are, when I see those velocities drop off as a coach, I can make a decision whether we're going to lighten the load or allow more reps. Once you're done with your workout, you hit end workout and it gives you a display of the distribution of the type of training you did during that session. So as you would expect from doing box jumps and high pulls, we see a shift towards power and speed, particularly speed, during this session. So the other cool thing about the app is that as you accumulate workouts, these percentages will change in terms of increased strength, power or speed based on the type of workout. So it will actually overlay, that's where it says now and last, it will actually overlay, overlay the two training sessions so you can see how one training session has changed maybe in its variable. Maybe one day was a strength day and now you're on a power. So overall Beast is a really cool concept. Um, I think the real-time feedback that you get is cool to be able to manipulate um, in the session at the time but because the app measures the actual reps plus any other perturbations or decelerations that might happen during the set, you, you would spend a lot of time going through and deleting the false reps. Um, and so what I think we're going to try tomorrow is just to handwrite in real time on paper and do our own app. So tomorrow we'll try using this tool in a different way, kind of just for the real time feedback and we'll let you know how it goes.